I don't, I don't think it caught that. Right? Uh, By all means, kids, we can stop. We can stop right now. Uh, wow, climate change. This is like something that probably keeps you up at night. But uh, you know, what can you really do about it? So you kids know who Al Gore is? Al Gore, he ran for president. I think he went against George W. Bush. Okay, the guy who an Iraqi, I think it was an Iraqi person, threw two shoes at him. And he missed both times, it's tragic. But still, they put up a statue. I never They put up a statue for this, okay? Anyways, Al Gore puts out this movie called, what's it called? Climate change. Fight so bad. No, no, Al Gore's a politician. He didn't put out a cool movie. It's called uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, something like that. What? Anyways, he puts out this movie where he makes all these predictions that, like, hey, everything's going to go to hell in a handbasket. Like, climate change is going to end everyone. The polar bears are going to starve to death and die. The penguins are going to, well, penguins swim, so they can't drown. Um, you know, lo and behold, all, like, almost everything he said was wrong. But every time they talked about climate change when I was a kid, Man, the depression hit for two weeks. Two weeks! Two weeks. Two weeks is like 14 days. Two weeks, I'd lay in bed wondering, damn, the sun's gonna blow up in four billion years. Like, what are we gonna do? Oh, no. Doesn't even affect me. No. Okay. Four billion years. It, it, it's it's oh, so irrational, but I hate it. Okay? I sat there at night, I lay there, damn, sad, thinking about how the sun was gonna blow up. We can send the philosopher. We send them both. You can double trouble. Okay. Anyways, um, I'm pretty sure at the bottom right is a photo of New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Do you kids remember what Hurricane Katrina is? I I'm starting to forget what I say to which class. Okay. My uh, my brain is melting out of my ears, kids. Anyways. So, climate change is interesting, you know, anytime there's a weather-related event, you can just blame climate change, right? Come on, so like, man. let's think about these grass fires, right, these fires that are going on. I'm sure there's articles talking about, oh, climate change, there's a heat wave, right? But, like, who really knows how they got started, right? Maybe somebody lit something on fire. I, I don't know, I'm speculating, right? There hasn't been an investigation yet. It wasn't me. Yeah, it was. Probably you. But when you have something as broad as climate change, anytime there's a weather incident, I've been listening to a lot of uh, different people talk about this subject because it fascinates me. But anytime there's something related to the weather, you can just blame it on climate change. That's why I get so irritated when your kids' current event projects, like, oh, climate change this, climate change that, right? You, you, you did something on climate change, didn't you? Both of you did. What do you do? No way you're kicking that goldfish around. Please throw it out. I'm picking it up. Okay. Okay, don't do what I used to do in high school. Um, I can't tell you because then you'll start doing it. Exactly. 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 Now that I'm a teacher, I understand why my teacher was annoyed when, when I did it. Okay. Anyway, so this photo of New Orleans, right? There was a big hurricane. You kids know what a hurricane is? No. Yeah, no, it's, it's, like, like, it's like when when air and water combine and like that's impossible. Okay. It's not impossible. Look at that photo. It's real. It's not fake. Okay, that's more or less like a hurricane. It's obviously not a technical explanation. Anyways, so they had these things um, because New Orleans is close to the water. You know, they had uh, aqueducts and whatnot. They had a system built to protect just in case there's a big storm like that, right? Like because you don't want that. Like I don't know if you can tell. Like this isn't like some forested area. These are houses, right? So imagine like your house. How many of you have like two floors to your house, right? Okay, so imagine like right below the roof, the water is, right? So it goes right through your windows, into your basement, into your upper floor, right? Terrible, horrible. So I was listening and I've heard this on several occasions that the infrastructure, the stuff they built to protect the city from a big, big like rainfall, hurricane, water event like that, was only designed to keep the city safe for a storm that might occur one in every 100 years, which is not a long time span, right? Like a one in 100 years event can happen quite a bit. In the Netherlands, apparently the same infrastructure, they built it to withstand a storm that might occur one in every 10,000 years, right? And so 
why I bring that together is that, you know, anytime there is something related to do with the weather, it's very easy to just say, oh, well, it's climate change. How many of you remember those fires in Australia like a year or two ago, a couple years ago, right? And they're like, oh my God, Australia's gonna burn up all of it. Which like, quite frankly, considering all the poisonous, dangerous animals, all the, all the nightmare fuel that comes out of Australia, do you know about this? You don't know anything about Australia. Australia's not even real to you. Um, do you know about this? Yeah. You just, you just said that so you can say yes. Okay. I think but what's, some of the evidence that started coming out was some of these fires were started by people. And then some people were then pushing narrative, like, hey, it's climate change, right? It's too hot. Okay. And so, you know, this idea that what political and economic decisions should we make to respond to climate change? I mean, how many of you are willing to eat bugs so that a hundred years from now the weather could be a little bit colder? No, you, no like, like, should I show you the type of bug? Yeah. I don't mean like cute little insects. I mean like mealworms. You kids know what a mealworm yeah. is? The way you have, you, I, I don't believe it. There's no way you eat a bug. Oh, you know what a mealworm is? Okay. Yeah. Explain what a mealworm is. I would eat a bug too. I've eaten a bug before. I had to survive in the wilderness for a couple of weeks. Wait, you ate bugs like Timon and Pumbaa? You know what Timon and Pumbaa are? No. So how many blankets? Oh, wait. Yeah. 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 What, what, what? I eat like. What? No, that's not what they're talking about. So, like grasshoppers. How many of you would eat a grasshopper? Okay, well, there's no. There's no okay. You already have. That's. That's, that's disgusting. What about when you yeah, were little? Yeah, thank you for saying it. But what about when you were little? It, like a kid and didn't know what No, but when you were little, you were doing it because you didn't know better, right? You're just a small little child thing, right? It's good protein. It's good protein, but you know what's better protein? Steaks. Eggs. How many of you would how many of you would walk or ride a bicycle everywhere to protect the environment? I already would. Yeah, actually would. What about when it's minus forty? You gonna walk to school? No. <laughs> it's terrible. I can't walk to school. So it's important to think about the time span for these changes, right? So I was just listening to a podcast with this guy. I've listened to a lot of his material. His name is Matt. Bjorn Lomborg. <coughs> and it's important to take into consideration that, well, one of his, well, one of the things they argue is that one of the better ways to solve climate change is to make everyone wealthier, right? particularly the people who are in the poorest parts of the world, let's call them, right? Because when you don't know what you're going to be eating tomorrow or later that day when you don't know if you'll have food it's hard to actually care about the environment yep. additionally you know using better technology so apparently burning wood like a tree is really bad for the environment now better than burning trees apparently is coal which is still pretty rough for the environment you have like liquid natural gas natural gas that kind of stuff but then you can go into nuclear right so providing these people providing everyone around the world with cheaper, better sources of energy, because right, that's what fossil fuels are, and making everyone wealthier so that they actually can care about the environment. Because right, if you're broke, like, who really cares? Me. Um, yeah, but you're not broke. How do you know? Man, you live here. What do you mean you live here? What if I live? Look at all this infrastructure. Like, we have electricity, we have heat, we have water, clean water, right? What if I live on the street? You live in San Okay. Um, here's this whole thing about greenhouse gases. Quite frankly, like this would be better to just be taught in science, but you know, here it is. One of the things that governments regulate, like Canada is doing this now with carbon taxes. Do you understand what carbon is? CO2? Yeah. You don't, you don't know? So carbon, well, well, first of all, carbon dioxide is something that's released, like when you breathe in oxygen, you re release carbon dioxide. So humans produce carbon dioxide just to exist. But all of the stuff that makes life great Know, like electricity, Wi-Fi. Um, it sure does. Oh yeah. Man, when the Wi-Fi goes out, some people turn into 
demons. Yeah. Right. Just Demon. yesterday, uh, who was it? Someone was. I think it was you. You called the Wi-Fi. What did you call the Wi-Fi yesterday? Do you want to say it again? That was funny. You know, when the Wi-Fi goes out, you know, life gets miserable real quick. Okay? But even worse, imagine if in the middle of winter you had no heat in your house. She doesn't want to share. Okay. Um, you know, imagine having to walk everywhere or take a bicycle. We don't have cars. What's that? We don't have cars. Yeah, but you're you come here in a bus, right? No, no, I walk. walk you walk. That's a lie. You're lying to me. You you take a bus. Okay. Uh, has anyone here used the public transportation system in Leduc? In Leduc, yeah. How was it? Scary. No way. Why? I was alone and I was like eight. Eight. <laughs> Why? Why were you on the bus alone at eight when you were eight? Because I got lost and I wanted to go home. Oh, that's actually scary. Yeah. Okay. okay. Has anyone taken it recently? Because you're like what, fifteen? Um, you know, so it's challenging. Like you want to reduce emissions, you want to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that goes into the environment because carbon dioxide is one of the many greenhouse gases. Although I've heard since I've been learning about this that it's not one of the worst. It's not obvious why they choose carbon dioxide as like the one thing like, hey, we got to get rid of this and have as little as possible. But it's kind of unfortunate because for human life to be as awesome as it is, we, we, we release a lot of carbon dioxide and through all sorts of things, right? So, can I close this window? I'm getting cold. No. No, no. I'm actually going to say Oh, Alright, I'll just go into the grade book and then. Would your parents take away your phone? No. What would they do if your grades drop? They would just, just tell me to be like, better. better. <laughs> For me, you know, you know what? She's so, she's so jealous right now. She's so mad. She's fuming. She touched that. She's like, why? God damn it! I wish. <laughs> You can just see it. Why do that and you do not your <laughs> who else's parents take their phones away from the window? Okay. Definitely okay. Really Perfect. So I, I know who I can hold it over. Just go in there, fiddle around with some grades, you know? I mean, um, I would never, for the camera's sake. <laughs> you should Except for when I made that mistake, obviously. Yeah. I don't want Guacha. I almost. I was uh, distracted. <coughs> wow, how awesome I am. Okay. What's going on over there? I already talked about this slide. Uh, these impacts include rising sea levels. Right, but you kids know that Obama bought a house right by the beach? He spent like a few million. Right now, you, you really got a question. You really got a question. Some of these choices, right? I love Obama. Yeah, I'm sure I, you do. I do okay. You might love you as well. Okay. Yes. Um, he privately messaged me. <laughs> someone told me. So, so I had a student last year do a presentation again, climate change stuff, and I swear I want to say that uh, in her research, like the graph she was showing, was at the sea level would rise two centimeters every 10 years. Two centimeters, this much. Right. Now it's not that the show, no. so I made this mistake. I felt kind of stupid. I thought like the water would just creep forward two centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it goes up two centimeters. No way you're laughing at me, come on. I thought the water would just move no, forward two centimeters. But it goes up. How is that even? What's that? But the thing is, so, Melvis, two centimeters is enough. <laughs> 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 
So if the, if, the, if the water level goes up by two centimeters, it goes up everywhere. And obviously that impacts the islands and places by the water the most, but you know, we have technology that can deal with that. Can't deal with it. It's a skill issue. <laughs> More severe weather. So that there's a really good channel on YouTube. You would never watch it. We would die. Maybe you would. Maybe you would. Maybe there's a really good. There's a really good YouTube channel called uh, Climate Discussion Nexus. CBN, and they talk about a lot of this stuff. But in I should put up a video on there eventually. Well, not not while the camera. It's pretty alternative, man. It's we should watch my copyright. <laughs> what do you do when that happens? Oh, I don't edit that out. <laughs> Nobody's actually watching these videos. Come on. I'm oh, wait, sorry. I've seen everything. I get edits for you. Sometimes I watch the videos myself and I listen and I go, oh, wow. Okay, I understand why those kids were stupid. <laughs> That's a lie. You laugh. You laugh. Uh, the way you actually believe that. I'm ball too off teaching. Yeah. But I do look at myself. I go like, why is my neck so far forward? My head. Why am I doing that? Because you're weird. Why not this side? That's so mean. Who said that? Why don't you just sit up weird? That's so mean. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyways, severe weather. So this channel goes in on a lot of these claims. I believe they actually did a whole video on Al Gore's movie about how a lot of his claims are nonsense. But in terms of severe weather, She's struggling to exist there, right? Uh, in terms of severe weather, you know, they look at trends and I think a lot of what they find is that it's actually not that bad or worse than it's actually ever been. Why is everyone coughing now? All of a sudden, all of a sudden everybody's copying me. What are we doing? Okay, you're, you're gonna be there for a while. Okay. Um, yes, uh, what else? Uh, disruption of ecosystems is for sure like an issue. You know, definitely when you have expansion of farming and whatnot, when you're destroying natural habitats, and that's like a complicated issue. Because, you know, it's nice to like have your house, right? It's nice to live somewhere that's not under a bridge. Um, I'm sure animals feel the same way. You know, they don't like it when forests are cut down. You, sh you should understand this, right? Like you empathize with animals, don't you? I empathize with That's a lie. I empathize with don't say that. It's the worst animal. Okay. Fresh water supplies as well. Do you kids know what fresh water is? No, it's not. No. It's water that you can actually drink. Right? So, how many of you have drank like salt water? Uh, like in the ocean or the sea? It's nasty. We don't want to think about that right now because then I'll start gagging. It's actually all Oh. oh, that sounds terrible. Oh, uh, you were learning to what? Yeah, I went swimming in the ocean. Wait, how'd that go? Oh, fun. Were you good at it? <laughs> what does that mean? From the pool by Anna, why did you say racist things? I said racist things. You just said right there. No, wait, like, hey, mom, there was no. So anyways, this, this second last point there is very important. We use fossil fuels. How many granola bars do you have? <laughs> we use fossil fuels for everything in our life, like food production, fossil fuels, right? Because your food has to be moved across the planet. How many of you eat fruit? How many of you eat fruit? Raise oh, your hand. Nice and high. Good proud of it. Okay. I like pineapple. Okay. 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 The the fruit. What fruit is grown in Canada uh, or in Alberta? Uh, apple. Pineapples. Pineapples aren't grown here. Apples. Apples. Yeah, apples a little bit, right? Mangoes. But how do you get your apples and mangoes in the middle of summer? Uh, transportation, which takes. Fossil fuel. I, I freeze my apples. I just like 50,000 and then keep them. Yeah, it's magic, right? You know, there, there are stories of people 
who are so far removed with food production that they weren't like these people didn't know that meat came from animals. She's like, what do you mean? It's just meat. That's how they get so many people that consume animals. Because like, the actual animal is far away. Like, when you look at an animal, you don't see the cow. You just you don't, you don't see the cow. It's just packaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even at the grocery store, right? Coming up. What are you trying to say, vegetarian? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is one of the chapters last year I really wanted to redo. What are you guys doing? Stop touching one another. <laughs> They're so straight. Why are they like this? This is how God made me. Because God loves me. This is how God made us. Yeah, are you judging God? Yeah, you're judging me. Which, if God made you, you're God's baby, so you're judging God. No, I'm really disappointed. I love you. You love God. I didn't even make it higher than that. You remind me of a. You should remind me of a character from the show, Spuddy. What's that show? Yeah. Yeah. Ninja yeah. character. Who? Funny character. You yeah. look so depressed right now. Is this your least favorite class? Yes, it is. No one was asking. <laughs> I, already know the answer. I already know the answer. You, you revealed it earlier. Why are you beating yourself? That's so strange. I'm emo. <laughs> no, emo, emo is like. Oh, that's the camera. That's the camera, man. I'm recording. Can't be joking. I'm recording your channel when you post this video. I, I have a friend. Tyler. What do you mean? He's saying he's emo. When I when I was when I was your age. Tyler, you have to use the ruler. Now you're trying to beat someone else. You're trying to convert them to your what? What? Religion. Oh. religion. Trying to convert them to your ways. It's so strange. Why what? are you hitting yourself? What, what do you mean by that? No, exactly what I mean. He's hurting himself. You were doing it to him earlier. Weird. You, you Stop touching me, Justin. Anyways, hey, we're, we're all over the place today. We're so erratic. Uh, Can we go outside? No. You should go outside. Go outside. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. The other class behaved during. Wow. During wow. I highly doubt that was who's in your class. What? Being the guy. Yeah, but those are the only two knuckleheads. Everybody else is fine. But John's the thinker. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. Hey, anyways, um, yeah, this is one of the PowerPoints I wanted to review just because a lot of the information just seems, uh, and you're going to have to interpret this gesture, whatever this means, right? Like, uh, like crabs. But yeah, obviously, you know, if, if the temperature gets warmer, hey, did you kid? No, apparently not, because I'm, you know, just saying this for the next, for like the third time. Um, one of the guys who I listen to on the climate change topic, his name is uh, Randall Carlson. He's a geologist, but he talks about historical temperature trends. And technically speaking, you know, according to him, over a 10,000 period, we're technically in an ice age. Like it's getting colder and colder. We just happen to be, apparently, we just happen to be existing in a time, a smaller time frame where the temperature is rising. Right? But, you know, the thing with climate, with weather, is that it's never stable. What's your question? You need to leave. No. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's never stable. It's always changing. And to suggest that there's only one source, like let's say carbon dioxide, that's causing it all, is is, I don't know, not very, it's not a very thorough scientific process in my opinion. Yeah. Like, it's very rare that there's only ever one reason why something happens. Like I should remove this slide. This this scale is so absurd. 
So essentially what this thing is telling you that by 2099, which I'm pretty sure this is already, that this prediction is probably already wrong because it's probably from 2005. So it's saying that way up there at the top in the northern regions that it's going to be an average temperature shift of more than 20 degrees Celsius. So, so if I understand correctly, you know, it'll be 20 degrees Celsius warmer on average. Which is, Right. You get a ten. I could make more fires. I could make more fires. Make more fires, yeah. Wait. More evacuations as well. No, no. We shouldn't joke about that because some people's family. Town's fire. I can jump with the town's fire. That's unfortunate. Well, I didn't make a joke. I should have called it. And that was. Hey, why do you think uh, why do you think Alberta has such a big rate of emissions? Oil. Yeah, we produce a lot of oil here, right? It <coughs> could be. Um, but all of the provinces which are higher up on their emissions are also the most populated provinces as well. Right? So you know, when you just have a lot of people, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of production of emissions. Okay, so apparently, and I don't know how many, how much, or how many uh, coal-fired power plants we still have. From my understanding, they're trying to transition out of that because you know coal isn't as good for the environment as let's say burning natural gas or liquid natural gas. Okay, on the other side of the country, you know you have Ontario, and if they're the ones who are manufacturing and producing, again, all of this stuff takes a lot of emissions. You know, there's a lot of energy use that goes into producing food, producing the things we use for everyday life. You, know, you have carbon emissions from literally every single thing you're wearing, right? Like the earphones, the hat, the necklace, the shoelaces, socks, pencil, like everything takes energy to produce, right? Because the only thing that grows on trees is fruit. What's that? Vegetables grow on trees? Which ones? I think, I think you're referring to an apple. It's not a vegetable. Um, okay, so like, let's say for example, you're all wearing a shirt or a sweater. Okay, maybe it's made out of cotton, which is a natural organic fiber. Okay, cotton grows on a plant. So it takes energy to produce that plant, to grow it, to harvest it, to then, uh, process it, make it into a usable substance. Whereas more unnatural fibers, let's say like polyester, right, there's a bunch of unnatural fibers that uh, you know they, they, they don't grow on a plant per se. So these kids are running out there. Yeah, that's me. James Monette, please return to class, please. Uh, let's see what the next slide is. What's going on here? Okay. We'll uh, we'll wrap up with these two slides. <coughs> oh, this is great. So carbon taxes. So what they're doing is that all of the carbon dioxide you emit, you get taxed for. Who emits the most? Well, it's going to be producers, manufacturers, people that are making stuff, right? Like large amounts of it. Sure, you emit a fair bit of CO2, but it's nothing compared to a factory. Okay. So now what happens is that the factory has to take into account with its production costs that, hey, we produce, I don't know, 500 tons of CO2. Well, we're going to be charged, I don't think it tells us a price. Say you get charged $5 per ton. 
Okay, so now in the cost of your item, you're also paying for the carbon tax. Which if you think about it, so when you create this carbon tax, the people it impacts the most is those with the least amount of money. So they're showing you a little graph here about how gas prices are affected. Okay, and uh, what is this? So BC is in the green. That's kind of BC average. Vancouver is in the blue. For whatever reason, gas in Vancouver is stupid expensive. I don't know why. And then red is the Canada average. Okay, so when BC um, introduces its own uh, carbon tax, you, know, you see that the BC average is above the Canadian average, but the Vancouver average is way above. So again, you know, if, if the cost of driving your car goes up, who does that impact the most? The people with the least amount of money. And then you gotta ask yourself, well, who is that tax really helping? Like, let's say you make forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, thirty thousand dollars a year. You have a family, and now all of a sudden your groceries cost more because it costs more money to transport them, it costs more money to get to and from work because of the gas prices. Everything goes up because you know the cost has gone up. Who is that gonna harm the most? People with the least amount of money. Right. And so you gotta figure out like how do you manage both protecting the environment, but also making sure people don't become poor because of those policies. Because that would be terrible. Because once, you know, if you're poor and you can't feed yourself properly, you know, you're not really gonna care about the environment. enough there's a conflict between Alberta and Ottawa right now over um, natural resources and who is allowed to <coughs> okay, I don't know too much about it but the current premier is not happy with the way the federal government is handling the capacity for, for Alberta to manage its own natural resources. And so, you know, some people say that, well, we should separate from Canada because, you know, the federal government isn't helping us, but I don't know, unless BC goes with you, you're kind of screwed because then you're just stuck in between a couple countries, but yeah, we, we won't talk too much about that. We're at 33 minutes.